Investing in ETFs can seem really complicated because there's lots of different options available, but just knowing some key mistakes to avoid and some basic strategies to follow is very easy. I'll be sharing the four biggest mistakes that I wish I had learned earlier, so hopefully you can learn from them and avoid them when it comes to your own ETF investing. When you first start investing into ETFs, it can be a little overwhelming with all the different options you have available. So I'll walk you through the best ones to pick out based on your investing goals. You want to figure out your risk tolerance and the kind of returns that you want to make. The two main types of ETFs that you can buy are ones that give a nice consistent return, normally about 11%, and these tend to track the overall stock market. So the ones in this category are VOO, this includes ETFs like VOO and VTI. Then there's also growth ETFs that can have a far more impressive return, anywhere up to 16%, but they are a lot more volatile, so when the market isn't doing well, they tend to have a bigger drop in share price. This is mainly due to the types. Some of the main growth ETFs are VUG and QQQ. So the difference for the performance of these two types of ETFs is because of the types. The reason these ETFs have a different performance in terms of how much money they make and how volatile they are is related to the type of companies included in the ETF. VOO and VTI have big stable businesses like Apple, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, big branded blue chip companies that have stood the test of time and some of them are over 100 years old. Whereas VUG and QQQ have more speculative investments that tend to have better price performance when there's a bull run or the whole market is doing well, but they do drop a lot more when there's a bear run or there's not as much money in the market. And if you're wondering why the ETFs are always referred to as just three letters, it's because it's the abbreviated version of its name. So the full name for VOO is the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, which is a little bit lengthy to repeat that phrase over and over so people will just say VOO just to keep it a bit shorter. So what does it mean in practical terms? So we'll compare the returns that you can make from these two different types of ETFs. So the first thing we'll jump into is the returns that you can make from these investments. So from a practical standpoint, what does it mean if you get an 11% return every year? Basically every six and a half years you'll be able to double your money. Or if you were to invest $10,000 10 years ago with an average return of 11% per year, after those 10 years you would have $28,394. Or if you had a bigger risk tolerance and invested in a growth ETF like QQQ which has gone up on average 17% each year, it would take you 4.2 years to double your money. Or if you invested $10,000 10 years ago, your portfolio would be valued at $48,068. So there's definitely a big difference between investing in a growth ETF versus one that gives you a consistent return. So on screen, you can see the blue line at the top, which is QQQ, that has gone up 408% in the past 10 years. In comparison to VOO, which is the orange line at the bottom, that's only gone up 203%, which makes QQQ look way better on paper. But if you take a look at the maximum drawdown or the max price that the ETF has lost in terms of its value, the most that it's dropped for QQQ is 83% and for VOO it's only dropped 33%. So you do have the potential to make a better return with the growth ETF, but there's a huge potential as well to lose a lot more money depending on how consistent you are with holding on to the investment and if you're happy to see your portfolio potentially have a drop as big as 83%. Because if you're investing for growth, it might be better to just outright pick a growth stock. So if you take a look at the 10 year returns for Tesla, which is the blue line at the top, it's gone up 2,678% versus VOO at the same amount of time, 10 years, which is the orange line at the bottom, it's only gone up 203%. So if you're picking out something for growth and high returns, it might be better to just go with the growth stock. And if you want consistency, then and ETF like VOO or VTI that tracks the whole stock market in general could be a better option if you just want that consistent and reliable return that's not going to really have too many price fluctuations with it. The second thing is that ETFs don't always make you money. Of course in the long run they are a consistent way to get a good return and on average the stock market will give you about 8 to 10 percent but that's across a big time horizon say 40 years and you can see on this graph the S&P 500 which 
which is basically a representation of the whole stock market it doesn't always go up in a straight line there's lots of ups and downs along the way some years it might go up 10 percent other years it might go down 20 percent and other years it might just do nothing and move sideways for a long time as well i always thought the normal ups and downs that came with the market were a bad thing that you should only buy when the market is going up and you should always sell everything when the market is going down the third lesson is that etfs are made for passive investing you're just participating in the market and it's not the same as when you're investing into an individual company which takes lots of research time and energy from your end which is active investing so with the individual company you'll be researching the business's financials looking at the management team what are their plans to move the company forward looking at all of the historical data and the financial reports about the business so you can get a really good idea of what its plan is and how effective it'll be at growing your money versus with an ETF you're just consistently adding the same amount of money every week or every month into that investment you're just slowly building up your portfolio and you're not trying to figure out the best time to buy and sell an ETF the best strategy is to hold on to it for as long as you can and let that money grow and compound over time you can see from this graph that there's always something going on in the world that has the potential to negatively affect the market from global conflict housing crisis financial issues pandemics there's always something going on in the world that can affect what the stock market is doing but even with all these things coming up since the 1950s and even before that as well the market will give you a return of about eight to ten percent so it's always about a long-term strategy and just consistently adding to your portfolio for better or for worse when it comes to etfs you'll also need a place to buy them from so i'll show you how to get zero fees for exchanging your currency and buying your shares using a special platform called tiger brokers new users that sign up via the link in the description box will gain access to this exclusive offer so after that you'll pay the transaction fee and then you'll receive a rebate to refund that money back into your account so with this four times each month you'll be charged zero brokerage fees for investing next we'll be jumping into how to get zero fees for exchanging your new zealand dollar into the australian or us dollar or vice versa as well so you can exchange up to 2000 nzd into either of these currencies so to do that head over to your portfolio and then click on currency exchange and select the amount that you want to swap over next we'll be jumping into how to get zero foreign exchange fee so this applies to converting your nzd into the us or australian dollar or vice versa as well so with the foreign exchange it works the same way as the brokerage charge where once you complete the transaction you'll be charged the fee and then you'll receive a rebate to refund that money back into your account so you can exchange up to 2000 new zealand dollars every month without having to pay any foreign exchange fees and this offer is available for life